Okay. Now let's talk about types of flow. This is section 1.10 in the book. So, in the overall study of aerodynamics, you can divide things into continuums and free molecule regimes, and then draw a flow chart to show how these are all related. Continuum mechanics can then or yeah, continuum mechanics can then be divided into inviscid and viscous flows. And in either of these, we can consider incompressible or compressible flow. Okay, let's connect up all the elements of our flow chart. of compressible flow, there are multiple flow regimes. We have subsonic flow, transonic flow, supersonic, and hypersonic. In this course, we'll focus on the continuum treatment of mostly inviscid and incompressible flows. So, to start, let's just start at the top of this chart and work our way down. So to consider continuum versus free molecule, we can say that this is governed as is everything in fluid mechanics, by a dimensionalist parameter. And this is called the Knudsen number. K-N-U-D-S-E-N. -E so K-N by definition, it's lambda over L, where lambda is the mean free path for a molecule. That means the distance, on average, that a molecule will travel before it bumps into another molecule. And then L is just the length scale of the object of interest. So this tells us how large the mean free path is 
compared to the length scale of our object. It's also possible to show that for an ideal gas, the Newton number can be expressed in terms of the Mach number, Reynolds number, ratio of specific heats, gamma, and the constant factor pi over 2 as follows. Now, for reference, to give you a sense of when it's really important to think about the Newton number. We can figure out at standard atmospheric conditions what the mean free path is. So for pressure equals one atmosphere and temperature equals 25 Celsius, Turns out the mean free path is approximately 8 times 10 to the minus 8 meters. So we only have problems with the continuum assumption breaking down if the Newton number is on the order of 1 or larger, so somewhere between 0.1 so anyway, anyway, that's what order one means. So any, any, if the Newton number starts to get close to one, then the continuum assumption breaks down. But you can see that that would require dealing with objects on the order of 10 to the minus 7 meters in terms of a length scale. So for nearly all flows of aerodynamic interest, the Newton number is much much smaller than one. So the continuum assumption is a good one. Now, the next step that I want to discuss, we'll skip over the viscous or inviscid for a moment and come back to that in a little while when we talk about boundary layers. So let's talk about compressible versus incompressible flows. Now, all fluids are truly compressible, at least a little bit. But that compressibility can often be neglected. And this is the case for liquid in general and gases that are flowing at low speeds. And we'll just figure out soon what low speed means. Again, you're neglecting the compressibility in a given flow, not for a fluid. Now, the key parameter that governs the importance of compressibility effects in a flow is the Mach number, as was alluded to earlier. And while it's beyond the scope to show here, this, the assumption that the flow is incompressible 
is generally a good one if the Mach number is everywhere below 0.3. And in this course, we're going to focus almost entirely on incompressible flow. Now, the piece on the very bottom of our flow chart was flow regime. Within compressible flow, we can define somewhat arbitrarily four regimes. Subsonic means that the Mach number is less than one everywhere. And incompressible flow falls into this throat flow regime. The next one is transonic flow, which means that the free stream Mach number is subsonic, but usually near unity, so perhaps above 0.8. And in this case, the flow around a body will result in some regions of locally supersonic flow where the Mach number will exceed one. This is in contrast to a supersonic flow where the Mach number is greater than one everywhere. Finally, a hypersonic flow is one where the Mach numbers are generally greater than five. And this may seem like a subset of supersonic flow, and it is, but there's an important distinction, is that at this high of Mach number, other effects become important. For example, chemical dissociation of gases uh, can occur across uh, strong shock waves. At these Mach numbers. So that's a very important effect in this regime that doesn't show up at all in lower Mach number regimes. 